See, this is why you don't have kids. Brightburn. So Brightburn is the newest movie produced by James Gunn and written by the Gunn Brothers, one of his brothers, I believe. This movie is also directed by David Yarovsky, or whatever, however the hell you say his name, I'm terrible with names. And this movie stars David Denman from 13 Hours and Elizabeth Banks. This movie tells the story about a little small town in Kansas called Brightburn. A meteor crashes into Earth, it's a baby, and these two people who live on his farm raise it as their own. But then one day shortly after the kid turns 12, he starts slowly becoming more evil. This movie basically just takes the premise of Superman and it goes, what if Superman used his powers for evil and he was 12? It's basically evil Superman. That's what it is. And I think this movie takes place in the same universe. I saw an article saying that there was Easter eggs in this movie that confirm that this movie takes place in the same universe as Superman, but this movie is not made by DC or anything. Now going into this movie, I wasn't expecting too much, but I do see this movie on a lot of people's most anticipated list. So I kind of set the bar a little high. I know that this movie is written by you know, the Gunn brothers, and they always write dark movies. James Gunn produced this, so I knew it was going to be dark. But holy crap, this movie has some surprises in it. The biggest surprise was how bloody this movie is. That is positive number one. This movie is gory, and it doesn't shy away. If you've seen that trailer, you saw what happened to the woman's eye. I can kind of relate to that. I had a situation like that, except it was reversed. I didn't have something go in my eye, I had something come out my eye, and that was fungus. And I permanently have scar tissue there, and I am blind. Not permanently blind, but whatever. This movie is over the top with the gore and what happens to people. Their, their body carnage, what happens to them, and just the brutality, the sound design of people just getting smashed. But also over the top, like it could not happen. There are some dumb character decisions, definitely. I like that this movie at least tries to attempt to build up these parents, these they're trying to have a kid at the very beginning they just got married and she's having a hard time getting pregnant and then this little angel falls from the sky and they're like oh let's raise it and we do get to kind of see the relationship with the kid growing up for like a minute and that's it really we don't really we don't really get to see too much bonding with them but we get enough there's a camping session so we do get to see their chemistry together but it's still not believable how much this woman will just say whatever i don't believe that my kid's evil and it's like oh pff, get a fucking clue that is a negative right there like how much she just will she just does not believe anything no matter how high the evidence stacks up like again like it's your son and she's like whatever i'm not seeing it i don't see it you just want to like reach into the screen and like shake elizabeth banks like what the fuck is wrong with you but she really just loves her son and she will not accept the fact that he is evil i like that this movie kind of has a unique concept like i i haven't seen any movie like this where it's a super kid that's evil so points for being original in some way it's still a super villain i guess movie it's not a superhero movie but it's still creative in some way it's a little different this movie actually had one pop-up scare that actually got me I, my body jerked i did not see it coming and i also like how dark this movie is it's not trying to be a happy it's sunshine ending like everything's good they save the day it's dark if you know the gun brothers you know that james gunn he likes to write dark stuff belco experiment i think he did or produced or written did he write that? I can't remember. I've only seen that movie once, but that was a dark movie. And this is dark too. But yeah, overall, I think the biggest positive, the thing that I enjoyed the most, was just the carnage. There was a few moments in this movie that will stick in your mind, like you will remember it like days later, be like, oh god, that was awful. Did you remember that scene? It's something that you will talk about with your friends. Like, did you see that part? That was awesome. But other than that, there's really not too much. I enjoyed about this movie. I was kind of bummed out that it was predictable. Like I said, Elizabeth Banks, I wanted to slap her. She was stupid. It's like, get a clue, woman. Your son's evil. Another thing I did not like was just how predictable the movie was. Like, things that were being set up, I was like, that's going to come back later. That's going to be used later. She's going to try this. This dad's going to try that. And like, it, like, I was just guessing it like three to five minutes beforehand. I was like, yep, guessed it, guessed it. This is going to happen. This is how it's going to end. You basically know where the story's going before it happens. So I wasn't too surprised. The only thing that surprised me, like I said, was just the brutality that I saw. I was like, wow. Wasn't expecting that. But yeah, everything else just didn't surprise me. The acting's fine, and, but the, it's just not believable, the situation. I like how the dad never like questions what happened to the lawnmower. Remember the trailer where he like, breaks the lawnmower? It never becomes a question. It's like, really? My dad would be like, hey, where the fuck is the lawnmower? You broke it? This movie just kind of reminded me of a movie that just came out a few months ago called The Prodigy. It just 
felt more like a more supernatural prodigy movie. And it, like, has the same thing that happens in this one. And just, I know I said there was, like, one pop-up scare that got me. But that's because, I, I don't know, I was kind of distracted in my mind. But everything else is just predictable. You got the, the cliche, like, lights flashing on and off. And it just gets pitch black. And then the light comes back on. And it goes off. It comes back on. There he is. Or, like, the camera will look in front of the actor and then it'll like pan to where you're looking behind the actor and it's like oh he's behind them just things like that and it's like we see it a million times and it's just like the scares they the movie doesn't scare me at all like that one pop-up scare wasn't even meant to be like a scary thing it was just like when a kid wasn't evil yet but he kind of like popped up and it kind of got me so overall i was kind of let down by this movie i don't i mean just the, just the gore if you're a gore hound you'll find some things to enjoy about this movie but if you're expecting something that's very scary or just thrilling. There's really not too much there. But this movie, I like that it doesn't waste time. It's only 90 minutes. And it's like 5 minutes in. And I feel like you know the kid's like starting to slowly become evil. And realize who he is. So it doesn't waste time. So I like that. But other than that, this movie, I just wasn't too impressed by. So when it comes to Brightburn, maybe just check this one out at Redbox. And those are my thoughts on Brightburn. What did you think about this newest James Gunn produced movie? Let me know in the comments below. What did you think about those gory moments? I don't know why that guy didn't fasten his seatbelt. What a moron. He had like a whole minute to do so. But anyways, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Hit this like button, support this video, tell all your friends about me, and you can follow me on social media right here. Or here. It's over here. And you can become a subscriber today just by clicking my cartoon face in about five seconds to see more. And until next time, I'll see you soon.